Believe it or not, this is all art made from watermelons. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about the phloem. So the phloem is one of the important roads or transporting mechanisms in a plant. We have previously covered the, um, the xylem. We know that this brown pipe right here, or this dark green pipe, however you want to see it, this is the xylem, and we know the xylem is one of the important roads. It takes up the water uh, and the minerals from the soil and brings it up against gravity to all the cells of the leaf and um, of the stem that may need it, right? Now, the phloem is also a road, but it does something slightly different. Where the xylem carried stuff from the soil upwards, the phloem can carry things from the leaf downwards. You understand? So it does, first of all, a different direction. Whereas the xylem came upwards, the phloem can go downwards, but also upwards, okay? But it doesn't bring anything from the soil. Now, what specifically does the phloem carry? The xylem carries water and minerals upwards. Now, the phloem carries something different. It carries um, molecules that are required for energy. Water cannot give you energy. Minerals cannot give you energy. So the phloem will carry things like sugars, sucrose, and things like that, that your cells, that the cells of the plant can use to create energy and survive. So, specifically, we know What's special, up, special about plants is that they can do photosynthesis, right? So let's say on the leaf here, there's a, uh, there's a cell creating, creating glucose or sucrose through photosynthesis. And then um, we know, for example, let's say the stem cannot do this. It cannot do photosynthesis. So how does the stem or this fruit create, um, get its energy from? Where does it get the nutrients from, this glucose or the sucrose? So the way it gets this glucose or sucrose is through the phloem, another road. So the, these cells in the leaf will make the nutrients, make the sucrose, and then it will need to be transported to these other cells that will need this energy or need these nutrients to survive. So it travels by a pipe called the phloem, okay? So the xylem brings water up and minerals. The phloem will carry the, the things made by the leaves to supply the other parts of the plant that cannot create this energy by itself, okay? So that's what the phloem is in a nutshell. It's just a little pathway or a pipe, okay? So in my words, a transporting pipe for nutrients of the plant, okay? That's the most simple way of putting it. Now, um, the process of the movement of this nutrients through the phloem is called translocation, okay? So translocation is the word that describes the movement of these organic molecules through the phloem, okay? So organic, again, um, when the water was absorbed and the minerals from the xylem, these things are not organic because organic molecules are made up of carbon, like sucrose and glucose. If you look at their chemical structure, you will see they're made up of carbons and oxygen and um, hydrogens and things like that, okay? So organic is different from water and minerals. Water and minerals are not organic. Now, this right here, why did I put a picture of this candy? This candy represents the sucrose and glucose, the organic molecules that this leaf will make. It will make these and put it into the phloem. The phloem will carry it down to the fruit or other places that will use this as energy to survive. It will use it as food. Okay, now we're going to get into the real details, but the things that will make sense now. So here we have this plant, right? Now, how exactly and where exactly is the phloem? So first, to understand the phloem, it's best for me to show you the xylem first. So we are zooming in to this part here, okay? Because I want to show you in this video how the things these organic molecules are transported from the cells in the leaf that made them to this fruit that needs them to be able to grow, okay? And this, um, so let me, sh let's, let's make it clear. So here, all of these things will be used in this video, and when this is cleaned up, it will make sense. So we're going to make a picture here that's zooming into this part, okay, between here and the fruit.
okay? All of this part right here, how it moves from here, where, the, where it's made in one of these cells, all the way to the fruit. Now, we know the xylem, like I mentioned before, so carries, um, carries water all the way from the root, up, 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 up to the rest of the plant that, that will need it. Okay, so here I'm going to put water in the xylem, okay, because it's carrying water and minerals. So, and it's in this direction, okay, it's upwards, and now we're focusing on this area, which is in this direction, okay, so it's moving up. Now, what else do we need to know? We need to know that, um, we need to know the cells that create this, this, this organic molecules, okay, so where are these cells? So in, pl in close proximity to the xylem, there are these other cells, okay? They look like plant cells. They're normal plant cells. They have organelles like chloroplast, vacuole, mitochondria, nucleus, all the normal plant cell features. Now, this is going to be the cell called the source, okay? Because the source is where... Um, it's the, you know, like source in English just means where something is from, right? The source of something, the source of water. So this is called the source because this is where this candy is going to be made. This, all these organic molecules like sucrose. Okay. So in word form, this is the cell where all the materials are going to be made. Now, the source cell wants to send all of these, uh, or some of these, um, things that it made, these, these um, sucrose or other molecules to the target cell. This target cell is called the sink. Okay, so it wants to send this extra. It has some extra ones, right? That it made to be able to send it and help the rest of the plant. How is it going to send this um, sucrose or this extra molecules to this plant? How is it going to do that? Because this here, our sink. This is our sink. So the sink is just the word they use to describe the cell that receives the materials from the source. The cell that cannot create its own materials. It needs to get it from somewhere else. And sinks can be many things. So a sink can be um, a, 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 um, a fruit, a stem, um, a seed, something. All the, all the parts of the plant that cannot make all these materials by itself. So in our example, we're using the fruit as the sink. It's waiting for its nutrients so it can grow. Okay, so how... Now, how does it get from the source to the sink? The key is the phloem. So I'm going to explain um, exactly how now. So next to the source is something called a companion cell. Okay, let me get it clear. A companion cell. Okay. A companion cell is going to take this. I'm going to make it smaller. Otherwise, it's going to get crowded. So a companion cell the source will send all these um, uh, organic molecules to the companion cell. The companion cell will then, using energy, so energy in biology, uh, we know in our bodies or in living things, are, is ATP. So it's going to use ATP to send, and we, where is ATP made again, right? The mitochondria. So using the energy from the mitochondria that it made, it's going to send these molecules, these organic molecules, from the companion cell into, a, into um, the, uh, another kind of cell called the sieve tube cells. Sieve tube cells. That's these. They make a tube. Um, they make a tube-like structure because they have little holes in between the cells like this. So it's like a pipe, similar to the xylem. There's like a pipe, but they're made of cells. So these are individual cells. As you can see, they have some organelles. But they're connected by little holes, forming a long kind of pipe. Okay, sieve to pipe. And a sieve, because um, I don't know if you know what a sieve is, but a sieve is something that filters uh, molecules, right? So because it looks like a filter um, in between the cells, they call it a sieve tube cell. Okay, so the sieve tube cell now received these um, organic molecules. Okay, let's say we have a bunch now. A bunch of organic molecules okay so it's a high there's a high concentration of these organic molecules in the sieve tube cell now before we move on the combination of the companion cells and the sieve tube cells is called the phloem so now it makes more sense right 
So the phloem is a name given to both of these combined. So this is the phloem. So the phloem is the part that's going to transport and send these organic molecules into the sieve tube cell down. Okay, so the, so the phloem is the companion cell in the sieve tube. They, can, they comprise the phloem. Now, now that we have all these organic molecules in here, um, what's going to happen is something interesting. We notice the sieve tube cell is located adjacent or next to the xylem, okay? The xylem contains water, right? Water. Water travels by osmosis. So if we have a channel or a little um, pipe here connecting the xylem and the sieve tube, um, what happens is the water will go into the sieve tube because the sieve tube has a high concentration of these organic molecules. Water travels into areas of high concentration by osmosis because it wants to dilute it out, okay? If it's really concentrated, it will want to travel there to dilute it. So this is exactly what happens. Because all these organic molecules accumulate and get um, become high in concentration, water from the xylem will go into it. So now, right here, there's a high concentration of water that came pouring in. This creates something called hydrostatic pressure. Wait one second. Here's the arrow, represents going. So the water traveled in here now. That's why I have the arrow. Now this creates hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is water pressure. Pressure created, um, pressure that is created by water. Hydro means water, right? So the pressure created by water. So if there's a lot of water in here, it's gonna mean there's a lot of pressure. We know water is really strong. If you've ever gone into the ocean and there's a big wave, if that big wave hits you, you're gonna move, right? Because the water, the wave had a lot of hydrostatic pressure. There was a lot of the water forcing you to move. Just like that with waves, as the water comes in into the sieve tube cell, it's gonna create a lot of force and it's gonna squeeze or push all of these organic molecules down, okay? Because there's so much water in here now that these organic molecules have nowhere to go if they're being pushed except um, away from the, from the source cell to other places. And one of the places, it could obviously, obviously it could also go up. In my diagram, um, we're only going to explain what happens when it's going down. So these organic molecules will go up and down to different places, places that need these organic molecules. So again, the, the water came in, created a high amount of hydrostatic pressure, forcing all these molecules to go down, travel down um, to a place where there wasn't much water, and that's down here. Okay, so this water, it pushes it, shh, all these molecules far down to a place where there's low hydrostatic pressure, a place where there's a little bit of water. Because now, as the water pushes, it becomes, um, it spreads out. So it's not, it, now it's not only in the small space, it's now in three blocks. So if it's spread it out in three blocks, it means there's a little bit of water in each block. Or in each cell, that's what I mean. So if there's a little bit of water in each cell, then it means that there's not so high, so much hydrostatic pressure anymore. Okay, so the big amount of water pushed all these organic molecules down um, to a place where there wasn't much water anymore. Now, um, as it travels down, there, for example, so now we just showed how it traveled all the way from here, one of the source cells, into the um, companion cell, then into the sieve tube cell next to the xylem, and now, um, now it get, got pushed down by this hydrostatic pressure all the way to the fruit, okay? So now it's near the fruit. So now it's really much, it's basically here. So how do we get this, or, this organic molecules from the sieve tube cell in the phloem to the sink cell, which wants it? So very simple. When it gets here, um, what's going to happen now is it's going to want to move into here, okay, into the companion cell again. But... The problem is, under normal circumstances, there's already a lot of, um, of uh, material, okay? Because these cells all consistently get sent um, um, organic molecules to use. So if there's already so much in here, in the cell, how can we move all these molecules into here, even though there's already a lot? The key is ATP, right? So now ATP, which is made by the mitochondria, will ensure that we can bring all these 
organic molecules against their concentration gradient because there's already so much of it in the companion cells, so it gets brought in. Now that it's in here, there's so much of it, it will just simply go straight into the sink cell. And this sink cell can now use all of these organic molecules um, to survive, to create more energy so that the cell can grow and get bigger and create a fruit or a seed or a new plant, whatever. It depends what the sink is in this scenario. In our scenario, it's a fruit. So this fruit will now grow bigger, become sweeter um, and become an adult. But in another scenario, it could be anything else. So one more word I was missing is the process of this flow Remember, the hydrostatic pressure caused um, the water to push these organic molecules down. This is called mass flow, okay? Mass flow is a process by which all these organic molecules flow as a bulk together due to the hydrostatic pressure. Now, one more thing. Here we have um, the same picture. I just tried to make more space here. So I put it here. We have the xylem, sieve tube cells. I removed everything because this slide isn't going to focus on the process. I just want to tell you um, sh clearly with an image here what the sore cells do and the sink cells do as a summary. So the sore cells will create organic molecules such as sugar or amino acids. We know these things are very important um, for all cells to survive. Without these, they can't grow, they can't get bigger, and they can't survive. Now the sink in our scenario was a fruit, okay? But the sink can also be seeds also be simply for the cells to get bigger. Some cells like the stem, um, like the stem, let me go back, may just want to grow bigger, grow taller, grow stronger. So these, um, so the, the sink can also just be a stem trying to grow or a cell trying to get bigger. It doesn't have to be a fruit or a seed, okay? Now that's it. That's it for the flow. I hope, I hope uh, you learned something in this video.